And we begin tonight with a news alert from Northwest Detroit. A teenager is grazed by a bullet fired by a Detroit police officer. It happened shortly after 7 this evening in the area of Chatham Street in Finkel. Police were patrolling the area when they encountered a 16-year-old on suspicion of carrying a concealed pistol. When police started to investigate, the teen ran. Officers fired two shots, one of which grazed the teen in the leg. Looking at if the suspect fired at the officers first, if the officers fired at the suspect, all the other details, uh, once we get the, that information, will be included uh, in our community release. The teen was carrying a stolen 9mm. No officers were injured. The incident remains under investigation. Well, investigators in Ann Arbor officially link one man to two stabbings in the city. Today, 21-year-old Noah Williams was charged for two knife attacks, one that took place yesterday on a city bus and another that took place earlier this week at a Target store on State Street. The woman on the bus was slashed across her chest and has since been released from the hospital. The victim at Target was threatened with a knife after bumping Williams at the store. Williams was given a $750,000 cash bond in each of these cases. It's been about a decade since we've been able to say this, but the Detroit Tigers are one of the hottest teams in baseball going into the big home opener. Say it again for the people in the back, right? It's already <laughs> considered a holiday in Detroit, but when the team's playing this well, it just makes tomorrow's game all the more special. And batter up, group. Fox 2's Dave Kinchin has more from Comerica Park. Well, the lights are on at Comerica Park. Sports apparel on. Check. Oh, yeah. Opening day coming up. Nobody does it better than Detroit. At Nemo's Bar in Corktown, everything is exactly as it should be, with Tigers fans decked out in their team gear, watching the boys on the road on the eve of the ever-so-sacred opening day. We have a great day. We have St. Patrick's Day, but opening day is the best. It is the best. Sandy Simmons is one of the managers and says the very strong 5 and one start is is only amplifying that timeless energy steeped in Detroit roots. Everything's just kind of coming back to life and everybody's excited about everything. We have a uh, big huge tent outside that covers the whole parking lot basically. We have bars out there. We're going to have a band out there. And much closer to the opening day action at Comerica Park. Oh, I've probably got a 22 hour day for me tomorrow um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. Anna and the team at Tin Roof are ready to kick things into overdrive. All the staff will get here at 7, we'll open the public at 8, um, everything will be rolling, we'll have our kitchen, our food truck, um, we have five bars open to the public, um, so it's going to be a party all day, all night. The beer tin is already in place following last weekend's Sweet 16 festivities, so now it's all about the next big thing. We wait all winter for opening day, opening day is the kickoff to our busy season and the busy season for so many bars and restaurants in downtown Detroit, it's really integral to our doing well that the Tigers do well. Meantime, those who aren't quite pre-gaming just yet are stocking up on gear at shops like Fanatic U in Garden City. People are all going crazy for opening day, all coming in here, grabbing an opening day shirt, grab, make sure you got the you know new hat for the year. So I'm going to wear this hat tomorrow, and I'm going to wear this awesome, awesome, awesome shirt right here that represents the Tigers, that represents Detroit. Here we go. Yes, the stage is set for unbridled enthusiasm at the Diamond downtown, and it's literally being set up for the NFL draft later this month. But that's a whole new ball game. Well, I think the, the closest thing was when we hosted the Super Bowl back in the day, and that was crazy. So I think this draft is going to be, you know, multiply that times 10. It's just going to be so many people from all over the country. I was here for the Super Bowl in the All-Star game, so I kind of know what to expect for a big event event like that that's on a national or even a world stage um, but you know Detroit has changed so much since we've hosted any of those events um, so we're just really excited and you know we get the best opening day coverage in town Fox 2 all morning will keep you going Dave Kinchin downtown on the edge all right, you're right about that, Dave. It'll be a bit chilly in the morning, though, for the opening day party crowd. A few beers, maybe a Bloody Mary <laughs> might help. Right. Captain Rich Luderman has our opening day forecast. Hey, Rich. Beverage of choice. I love that, Doug. <laughs> Jess and Roop. Yeah, it is going to be brisk and chilly around here tomorrow. Right now, we're still dealing with a few rain and even a few wet snow showers coming at us from the north. And you can see along Interstate 69, some wet weather there. Again, a couple of wet flakes not out of the question. We didn't make it to 51 today, 36th 
the morning low, pretty close to where we should be for this time of April. Look at the record, 74 and 9 on the low side. Thankfully, not that cold out there. A lot of us are in the upper 30s to lower 40s. There is a breeze now from the north as low pressure is deepening off the uh, eastern seaboard. Look at all the blue on the map. 40 Chicago, Fort Wayne, 37 Newberry, even colder around Toronto. They're at 32. So watch high pressure slowly work in from the west. That means a better weather pattern for the weekend ahead. But tomorrow, it's going to be breezy. It's going to be cool. We'll have some peaks of sunshine from time to time, but it'll be mostly cloudy from start to finish. For the rest of tonight, any spotty showers of rain or snow will be ending overnight, but certainly chilly down to 34. Tomorrow, 47 for an afternoon high. First pitch temperature around 42. But it's going to be brisk at times tomorrow. But notice for the weekend, it gets better. 53 Saturday and Sunday. The big eclipse is Monday. Still a tricky cloud forecast, but we're going to be hopeful and even warmer numbers for next week. Roop Jessica, we'll see you at 4 a.m. Thanks, Rich. For the second time in a week, a massage parlor in Metro Detroit is busted for prostitution. As Fox News' Amy Lang tells us, this time the illegal sex services were uncovered in the quiet town of Rochester. This has been a massage parlor for about six months. We get um, only men only. It's open till 10 o'clock every night. Something seemed to miss at a new Rochester business. Police tell Fox 2 the Green Rose Health Studio moved into an office complex near West University and Livernois last November. And while the business advertised massages, we're told the services turned out to be more sexual in nature. We noticed that traffic was starting to pick up um, males coming in and out of the business. Um, so it was evident that there was not a massage parlor specifically. People that were coming in to get a legitimate massage were denied. Those who worked and lived nearby started documenting the activity to give to police. The citizens, some of the citizens here in Rochester have been taking pictures of cars and license plates that have been coming and going from out of state, Indiana, mm -hmm. Illinois, and they've been coming here just to get a massage, but we knew better. An investigation began at first. Police were concerned the women at the business were victims of human trafficking. Trafficking. They were relieved to discover that was not the case. They're calling this a low-level prostitution business. We had undercover officers go in, execute a search warrant, arrested uh, three individuals, two Asian females and a white male um, that was a client. In addition to Tuesday's arrests, police also confiscated cash, cell phones, and computers during the raid. And it turns out this isn't the business's first stop in Metro Detroit. We had information that this... Uh, this operation had moved from Livonia and just basically changed the business name. Okay. Uh, and it was the same players. The citizens of Rochester and those who work there are thankful for the police work in this case and hope this sends a message to anyone else looking to pursue illegal activity in the city. In Rochester, there's no place to hide. In Rochester, Amy Lang, Fox 2 News. And it was just last week a massage parlor in East Point got shut down. Customers told police they were offered sexual acts in exchange for cash at Bella Touch Massage. An undercover detective confirmed that information. The Macomb County Prosecutor's Office now reviewing the case for potential charges. Well, it's been a busy week for East Point PD. Investigators have also been busy tracking down a young crime crew believed to be responsible for car thefts across the city. Once officers went in to make the arrest, that's when things really took a wild turn. Police pleading with the 14 year old driver to stop started with a 911 call. Caller said some suspicious teens, six of them casing cars. No plate on it. Southbound. Responding East Point officers saw a busted out back window of that Hyundai turned out to be stolen. A short chase through East Point dipping into Roseville speeds of 80 miles per hour. Coming to a crash here off 10 Mile near Gratiot early Wednesday morning. <laughs> all six, ages 14 to 17, ran off. Not for long, though, all were eventually arrested. That original 911 caller was right. These kids were up to no good. Listen to what investigators found on them. 
Two handguns were recovered. Um, we recovered a couple of small baggies of marijuana um, and several uh, black and other dark color and gray ski masks um, along with a window punch. Chief Corey Haynes says they, like a lot of other cities, have been dealing with people breaking into cars, even stealing them outright. This um, was apparently one of the crews that was out here doing that. This crew dismantled that 14-year-old driver facing eight felonies, 10 other felonies spread out amongst his buddies. It's just awful. Um, you know, it, it brings a lot of things to mind, like where are the parents? What are they doing? The chief, suspicious these kids were working for adults. You know, they employ these kids to go out and do these things, and they reap the benefits, um, thinking that the kids aren't going to get in any real big trouble. He says let this be a warning to any other car theft rings out there. My message is stay out of East Point. Reporting in East Point, Jessica Dupnak on The Edge.